Good morning! Day two in San Jose. Just made it out to the Intel Autonomous Workshop. And it seems that that's the biggest craze now. Self-driving. If I ever had a car that I could just sit in and kind of just moss, hang out, I think that would be pretty sweet. So, pretty stoked about this. Let's kind of see the sign. Get in there. This is the vehicle right here. Planning. You also see here that there's crosswalks, okay, being specifically highlighted. Those are turning green right now because there's no one on them and we can actually cross. To see here the detection of the different uh, traffic lights, you get, to, you get to see the vehicles crossing. Okay, just getting back from my first drive of the day and that was with the combined Audi Delphi car. Initial first impressions, I thought the vehicle looked like a regular consumer vehicle. It doesn't have that giant little detector up top, which you've kind of seen in most autonomous cars. Most people will probably love is that space in the back. It's not filled with servers, so you can throw camera gear, gear, gear. I can throw my backpack in whatever you want, kind of in the back of your car without having to worry about that space being taken up by something else. And the second point which we'll talk about is the fact that you still need to have someone behind the wheel. It isn't completely autonomous in the fact that you can kind of hang out in the back, eat ice cream, sleep, pick your nose, whatever you like to do. There still has to be that someone behind the wheel to take control when you need to. Even though this isn't the first time I've driven in an autonomous car, still always cool to see a car essentially driving itself. The third thing which I really noticed was all of the information on the main display or the screen where the normal console is. Here you can see what the computer is trying to do and trying to gauge on what the car will do next. Areas that were highlighted in green were safe quote unquote areas and areas that were crossed out were areas that obviously points of concern around the car that it was noticing it couldn't go to those spots. And about the actual driving experience, I thought the AI was maybe a tad bit aggressive in how it was taking the corners. We were going a bit quicker. Some of the stops were a bit more abrupt than I'm not gonna claim myself to be a pro driver, but it just was a bit more aggressive than I would have imagined. But I felt totally safe and I didn't feel at any moment that we were going to die, crash burn. I personally really enjoy driving and I think only when that time came where I could sit in the back, moss, hang out, maybe edit some video is when I would make that switch to have it kind of partially assisted. Ah, I don't know. Curious to hear your thoughts. So we're inside the actual Intel garage now and this is where they're doing a ton of the chalk talks where you've had one over there one over this area and that's just different topics depending on I guess who's presenting. We've got some of the cars behind me. Fellow little guy doing his little live cast right there. We can say hi. Hey what's up? He's down there BMW. Another BMW. Let's take a quick little tour and kind of see what else we've got in the Intel garage. For kicks, I actually asked you guys over on social, what would you do with the time that you would save if you had a fully autonomous car? I'll read out some of the responses. Shade says, sleep in the morning and tell the system to wake me up when it reaches my destination. Obviously, that would be the best. If you had a little bed sitting in the back of the car, you could just kind of snooze. It almost becomes like your own plane and maybe a little alarm bell goes off when you've reached work. But would you be changed? Stan editing another fire video. Yes, if I could have more time in the world, editing takes the longest. As I said, I'm sitting in the back seat. The car is doing its own thing. Editing video would be maybe the second thing after sleeping that I would do the most. Vin says vlogging, and I think that goes hand in hand with recording videos. While the car is just doing its own thing, you can talk to the lens of the camera and we can come up with a cool little vlog that we can work on and just more time to do your own stuff in general. Toya, eat. Mostly I'm always running late, yes. Eating in a car is maybe the third thing that I do the most and I actually drive a stick shift so it's hard to actually eat while you're shifting gears, only having two hands, having the car do its own work. Freeze these guys up so you can use your phone and eat. 
at the same time. And Julian says, watching your videos, this emoji, thanks Julian for the support. I actually had a ton of fun and for any of you that are into self-driving, this is like self-driving 2.0 where we have a car that looks like a normal production vehicle. The one that I was just in was an Audi and you can't really tell unless you're looking really closely for those extra cameras, for those extra sensors and having the trunk space is super clutch. All right, just heading out of the garage now, hoping that some of the footage that I got kind of shed some light on the future of autonomous driving, working with different partnerships, different companies to really see what's gonna happen in the next five to 10 years. They mentioned they're hoping to get millions of cars out on the road, making it a safer place. Safer is better, obviously. I have to get my shades on here because it's so bright outside. All of the data that they're gathering, one of the instructors actually mentioned that they're getting around 10% fuel efficiency just based off of how efficient the routes that these cars can now take. Hard to believe that a car can drive better than you or I and almost tough to fathom, but I guess computers are here, AI is here and they are making things better and more efficient. You just gotta be okay with that. Cannot wait to start editing, mostly sleeping, in the back of my autonomous car. Hopefully sooner rather than later.